guys, I'm Brady. This is Sewing Back. Welcome to my kitchen. Um, today, we're going to try a new recipe because even though I have canned up um, salsa this week, um, pizza sauce, and I've actually made a couple salads, I still have tomatoes. I also still have cucumbers, but that's for another video. Anyway, I still have some tomatoes, and I saw this recipe because, honestly, I had so much of this already here at the house. Um, so it is called tomato basil chicken, and that's what's for dinner. So I'm gonna take you along uh, with me. We're gonna be using our Garden Fresh tomatoes. Now, if you don't have Garden Fresh tomatoes, um, you can get some store-bought, go to the farmer's market, pick up. You're going to need about two and a half cups of, of them once they're diced up. So you're going to remove the seeds and the liquid, okay? Um, you're going to need six boneless, skinless chicken breast. Or not chicken, you can use chicken breast. I'm actually using chicken thighs. Uh, salt and pepper to taste. You're going to need a couple um, tablespoons of avocado oil, some fresh garlic, we're going to need um, a little bit of heavy whipping cream mm, and some fresh Parmesan and the other ingredient, which we're going to go out to the garden and get, um, is some fresh basil. So I have some fresh basil out there. I'm going to go cut. I'm going to take you and show you. And we're going to pick up a few more okra I saw that were ready because I'm going to do a roasted okra as a side for to go with our dinner. I did get some frozen cauli rice. I'm going to do a brown rice, but... Um, if you're watching your blood sugar and um, or you're doing low carb, you, you want to be really careful about how much you eat. And so a great way, a great kind of cheat is to do a brown rice, but only make like half as much. And then to do a collie rice, which you can get like at your local, I mean, you can get them fresh, but I just got a frozen one that I can just pop in the microwave and then incorporate it with my brown rice and have that as a side dish because this yummy tomato basil will have a sauce. Um, I guess if you just if you wanted to keep it real low carb, then you could totally just do the cauliflower rice. Um, or if you don't like the cauliflower, there's like broccoli rice. There's a couple of different ones that you can do. You could probably also do, um, they have um, cauliflower rice with uh, like kiwan um, blends and stuff, you could probably do one of those if you wanted to. So that's essentially what we're having for dinner. So we're going to have a tomato basil chicken with a brown rice, collie rice blend and some roasted Parmesan um, okra. A lot of people just think fried okra or boiled okra. Let me tell you, roasted okra or raw, I like raw okra, but roasted okra with a little bit of olive oil and a little bit of um, some nutritional yeast and a little bit of parmesan it's beautiful so that's what's for dinner so have with me out we're going to go out to the garden and we're going to get the rest of our uh we're going to pick up the extra okra that we're ready and we've got to get our basil i already have my tomatoes and i just want to tell you if you don't want and i don't know if it's going to work but it's going to work because that's what i'm going to do i have lots of cherry tomatoes. We've eaten salads and all that good stuff. So um, I'm going to blend these up. You don't have to skin these tomatoes, which made me even like this recipe even more. Um, I did have a couple, and I want to show you, tomatoes that are like this. And these have a lot of seeds and liquids. And so I want to tell you, if you have tomatoes like that coming out of your garden, these little kind of small ones and stuff, they're very flavorful and they still have a good bit of meat so all I did was core it, and I used my grapefruit spoon, and I took out the seeds and the kind of the, the meat part of it, and all I'm going to do with that, that's not waste. You put that in a glass of some water, I'm going to use a little bit of Berkey water, and you let it sit. It will help take off that outer case of the tomato seed so that you can then dry your tomato seeds and seed save them so you can plant them next year. That's how you get um, new tomato plants, if you want to seed save. Um, this is, I know that this tomato was an heirloom, 
and even if it's not so what it's still good to try it um, play around with it especially when you're first learning how to seed save tomatoes are like I said a little different because you do have to put them in that that liquid you got to let them ferment to get that casing off um, so that you can get it ready to be a dried seed so anyway we're gonna head out to the garden and I'll see you out there all right guys so this is my front side garden you see my brown-eyed Susans and my lantana zinnias I have a little verbena down there. Hey, little butterfly. This thing's usually popping with butterflies. That's my little lime tree. It's not producing yet, but boy, is it looking so good, especially after I fertilized it. If you have citrus, you really have to fertilize them. That's my lemon tree. Lots of lemons this year. All right, so we're going to come in here. Now I have a couple different kinds of basil, but right here, that right there is some uh, uh, flat Italian basil. Of course, it's next to the uh, purple opal basil. Oh, they smell so good. And I'm going to clip some basil from over here. I got some okra right there. And I just was going to show you, oh, let's walk around. Let me walk around. Because my sunflowers, the sun comes up over this way. So, they salute. They like to salute the sun. I love these. These are dwarf sunflowers. So, if you, if you garden raised beds, these have been fabulous. I have some more that are just starting to open up on the other side. And... I absolutely love these. Look at that. That, my friends, are muscadines. That beauty thing right there, that is some turmeric. And this is a different variety of muscadine. These are going to be more, have a little more purple to them. So anyway, let's head into the gar uh, garden and let's get... Hi, my honey tree. Um, let's get us... Um, our basil and then we got you can come see I mean I just picked okra and I have more now y'all I grew these from seed these are marigolds this thing is over five foot tall this marigold <laughs> hi fella what's up I don't know I don't know. I'm not sure. Did he make it? Is he snoozing? Taking a nap? I'm not sure. Um, and here's more basil that I have. And this is actually, um, I can't remember if this is my holy basil or my lemon basil. Let's see. This is the lemon. This is the lemon basil. Oh my gosh, this stuff, y'all. Oh, it smells so good. So, I have more okra over here. I cannot believe all this. I just picked it. But that's kind of how okra is this time of year. Oh my goodness, look at that big one. He got a bend in him. I can't, these are supposed to be dwarf okras and they're just like almost as tall as regular. But they like this spot in my garden and they are really, they're really doing well. And we, like I said, we love okra. So, um, oh, I got a few more tomatoes that are ready to pick. And see, here's the other bed that have the sunflowers. Hey, you just, they just opened today. Hi, purdies. Uh, I think they're really pretty like that right before they open too. So, oh, look, I got some cucumbers on here. Just what I need, more cucumbers. But actually, these I like to dehydrate. They, I think that variety, actually, that's the yard long um, Armenian cucumbers. And those bad boys have made the best um, cucumber chips. Just straight up, nothing on them. And I have more basil over here. I think this is where my holy basil is. So, and, oh yeah, oh, I see some more big 
cucumbers over there. Um, that's a pretty diseased cucumber, which I'm okay with that because they can come out whenever. Um, and those are my black-eyed peas in that bed. And that's another um, Italian flat leaf basil. And that right there, now that one doesn't look as good. I planted, that is one of my propagated um, tomato plants. I planted that. I'm hoping it'll come back. It had strong roots. It was pretty hot today. I did it last night. So I'm hoping it'll rebound. Um, we'll see. And that's my bee balm after I have cut it all the way back. That is a prolific plant, y'all. No joke. No joke. And these are my pinto beans. They are coming along. And that's my green stock. And it has all kinds of herbs and flowers and all that good stuff. I'm not messing with my strawberries because I have a mama bird who built a nest. And she's so sweet and been so worried. So I'm leaving them be for right now. I'm, I'm good. They can have them for right now. Um, and then... Of course, those are the pinto beans, and then these are different tomatoes. These are some Cherokee purples, and they are starting to come on, so that's good. So I'm going to get these picked, and then I'll meet you back in the kitchen. Well, I got a little hot and sweaty out there. <laughs> My hair is falling down, I swear. Woo! It's like an oven out there. Well, this was what I only went out for. He has to be addressed. Sorry about that. He was in his house. I had to run my son to work. Um, so I did go ahead and pick a few of the cucumbers. I actually have a recipe I'm going to try to use with some of these cucumbers. And just when I thought, oh gosh, I got rid of them. I got more. <laughs> oh my. The Lord has been good. So I'm thankful though. All right. So I went and I got my basil. It smells so good. Now, whenever you go out to the garden, make sure you wash all this. There's creepy crawlies and things that you may not see that are there. And um, I did pick a couple tomatoes that were ready and I got my okras. So I am gonna get all the stuff washed up. I'm gonna get my tomatoes ready to go into my Vitamix because to make, um, the sauce you're gonna you're gonna pulverize them in your in your blender. I have a Vitamix, whatever blender you have, I'm sure will be fine. Um, but and remember, if you you're supposed to take out um, if you have tomatoes that have a lot of the seeds and juice, you're supposed to take that out. So you're supposed to be left with this, okay, that you're going to be pulverizing. You're going to need two and a half cups of that. My take on that is I'm going to be using some of my small paste tomatoes, and I'm going to be using a lot of my cherry tomatoes that are pretty ripe, um, and they're all different colors, and I'm going to blend those up, and I'm not taking anything out. So if it has a few seeds, well, it has some seeds, and we'll get over it, okay? Um, but these that are definitely have the other, I will take those seeds out and I'm going to put them in a jar so I can seed save. I recommend seed saving because if any of you garden this year, uh, one of the things you probably saw was whether you were growing, really if you were growing from plants, it was very unaffordable. One plant was almost $5. In some places they were $5. And... That's just not, if you're growing on a decent scale, that's just not affordable. That makes no sense. Um, so I encourage you to start your own seeds. You can get a little cheap greenhouse, or you can set you up a shelf in your garage or your basement um, and start your own seeds. And not only that, when you start your own seeds, you can get lots of different varieties, and you can try things and find things you like and find things... Maybe you can't find in the grocery store. Um, 
that's been fun for us this year. We've really tried a lot of different varieties. Some work, some don't. Like we did the little um, uh, mini butternut squash, and eh, we won't do those again. That to us, we felt like that was kind of a waste. You didn't get that much, even though I don't, eat, I can't eat them because I'm allergic to them. For John, I mean. It, I would have to have tons and tons, and I'd rather spend the garden space because it's the same garden space to grow full size. So that that's kind of my plan. I probably already got some seeds for next year for that from the Mar Gardener, and um, to to do that because they store well. They store they store a long time. They store well. So those are a good one if you're looking for stuff like that. So I'm gonna get my okra all washed up, and I'm gonna get these tomatoes done, and then uh, I will. Come back on when we're ready to start the recipe. Okay, so the first thing that we're doing for our dinner is we've got it, I've washed and dried the fresh okra that I just picked. And um, the ones that were too big, that one still has some give to it. So does that one, so I kept those in. Some of the other ones that were woody feeling, uh, don't bother. You can just let those dry out and seed safe. Um, because you really, you can eat those, then good luck to you. Um, the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put some infused olive oil um, onto these with a little Redmond's Real Salt. I'm going to use some nutritional yeast. And if you haven't used um, Bragg's nutri Nutritional Yeast, you should because this helps give you um, a boost to your B vitamins. It's really good stuff. And we're going to put a little bit of Parmesan cheese on top. I've got my oven heating up to about 375 because we're going to roast these in the oven while we have the other stuff going. So this, um, I talk about my friend, she has an oil shop and I love her oils. And, but I don't always get up her way up the neck of, wood, neck of the woods. And so sometimes I'll find other ones. And uh, I found this one because I told y'all, um, Actually, I don't think I put that video up yet, but when I show you my pizza crust, I actually have used a uh, basil infused um, olive oil that I had found. I can't remember if I found it at Little or Aldi. It was one of the two, and I'm, I'm out of it. And so when I was at Walmart the other day, I found this one. I think it was like $3.99, and it's a garlic and basil infused olive oil. So since we're doing a tomato basil chicken, I thought, well, this will just go. The flavors are going to meld really well. So I'm going to use some of this, and I'm just going to um, kind of coat it. Um, olive oil is really good for your heart, and you should be getting it in your diet. Now, salt, a little salt goes a long way if you're adding other flavors. And this nutritional yeast, actually... It gives it a nice nutty flavor, and it's kind of like a, it's between kind of like a nutty flavor and a, a Parmesan flavor. And so, <clears throat> it works well, but, and, and the, I find when I do stuff like this, I don't have to put as much salt, um, because oftentimes we, 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 we use too much salt, and it's not, too much of anything is not good. Everything in moderation, and salt is no no different so um you know keep that in mind and also people can always if somebody really likes salt they can always add that after the fact not everybody wants everything to taste like a salt lick okay especially here in the south that's a big issue um there's a couple famous people here in georgia if you go to their restaurants yeah it You'll be drinking gallons of water after you leave because it has a lot of salt uh, in their stuff. So this is some grated Parmesan cheese. Um, yes, the shredded. I got this. I love these. They have, this was from Little. I just happen to be up there. I don't get to go there very often because it's not really convenient. But we were coming back from the mountains. And the way we came home, we passed by one, and so we stopped. I was able to pick some of this up. And that makes me excited because it's going to be really tasty on here. And that's a side. Okay, all you got to do is roast in the oven about anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes, depending on how fast your oven cooks. 
So I've got that ready. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and prep my uh, brown rice that I'm cooking to go with my collie rice. And then we'll cook the chicken because it'll be a quick cook once we get going. Okay guys, so normally when I make my brown rice, I use my own bone broth, chicken bone broth. I am totally out. I haven't made it to the farmer's market to get me some more chicken feet to make some more because it's not worth making if you don't have chicken feet. It's just a, it's a whole new world, okay? So I'm going to use a cheat, and um, I'm going to be using some uh, broth base uh, and seasoning. It's chicken flavored. It does, this does have some sea salt, has turmeric, garlic, um, uh, parsley, it says some other, oh, some celery, spice, onion powder, chicken broth extract, um, and it has dextrose, and it uses corn, which is not great, but, you know, you only live once, so that's the way it is sometimes. So I have a cup and a half of water, and I ordered, actually, a dehydrated uh, bone broth powder from Azure, and I'm looking forward to being able to try that because I have a ton of beef broth, but my my dish is chicken, so I didn't want to use my bone broth that's beef. So I'm just going to put it says two teaspoons equals one cup of broth, so I'm going to put like. I'm gonna put that much. <laughs> As you can tell, I kind of fly by the seat of my pants a little bit in the kitchen. Um, that's just how I roll. So I have that in there uh, in my pan, and then I'm, I have my dehydrated, some of these are mine, uh, bell pepper. And I'll add a little bit of that because I think it'll add a nice flavor. So I'm going to put a little bit of that in there. I think it sounds yummy. I'm going to get this going. Um, on. Let's see. There we go. I'm going to put, it says to put butter in here, but I'm going to use some more olive oil. Not that there's anything wrong with butter. I just don't have any right now. It's frozen. And so I don't want to deal with that. So I'm just going to put a little bit of this basil infused olive oil and garlic because why not? You know, if we're going to have it, might as well have it in everything, right? I think it'll taste good. And so I put the equivalent of, or close to, what they say I need. And then I've got some Basmati brown rice. And I love this rice. I get this from Azure. And I just fill my little jar. And so for one and a half cups of water, you need a cup of the rice. going to get that going. And that's going to be um, our rice. I will heat the collie rice that I got um, from Publix. I'll heat it up in the microwave and in the end I'll mix them together. And the reason you do that, because I'm not, I'm only cooking a small amount of the brown rice, is so that you can still get some brown rice, but you also get um, the collie rice. So it kind of bulks it up a little bit and you don't feel like you've been, I guess, cheated, like you didn't get, you know, enough or whatever. I think a lot of people have that complaint uh, when they're, I guess, trying to do some of the portion control, but particularly when you're trying to balance those fats, proteins, and carbs. Um, sometimes you feel like, oh, I wish I had more of that. Well, this is a way to kind of stretch that. And help you feel like you're getting more. It's also a good way to sneak stuff in. Like if you have, you know, kids who maybe they don't like the collie rice so much, then you know, that's how it is. So all you're gonna do is bring that up to a boil. Then you're gonna put it down on a simmer for about 20 minutes, about the same amount of time as when I put my okra in the oven. So now I'm gonna blend up my tomatoes, and I'll show you what that looks like in just a second. All right. So a helpful tip, if you have a big family, you might, might want to double this. Um, 
Or if you have a picky uh, family member who maybe they don't like tomato-based products or sauces, what I recommend is taking a few of your chicken thighs, doing some of that infused olive oil, a little salt pepper, and you just stick it in the oven with your okra, and they'll have their meat that way. Um, that's it's really not harder to do that. So I did do that. I picked up a little bit extra so that I could do it because I do have one son who is really tomato based things are really not his, actually sauce in general are not his thing. So, um, and he's been pretty much consistent that way his whole life. So I like to try to pick something, you know, that he'll like. I got my rice going there. I've got my pan heating up. So what we're gonna do now I have my tomatoes, they're blended. I have my heavy cream. I have my garlic. I have Parmesan to grate. I have my basil over here and I have salt. And um, I gotta find my pepper, oh here it is, here's my pepper. So I have all my stuff right here. And I didn't mention this recipe comes from Carolyn Ketchum of all day I dream about food. Um, she does a lot of, um, if you're a Trim Healthy Mama follower, a lot of uh, people like her recipe. She has several books. Uh, she has like uh, a baking book. She has like a soup book. She's got several different books so that you can follow that kind of lifestyle if that's what you want. Um, the, uh, the sides, that's all me. Um, but I'm, I'm using her recipe, however, I've, I've changed it just a smidge, but that's okay. I will link her recipe in the description. I'm just waiting for my pan to get hot, and what we're supposed to do is we're going to um, brown up these um, chicken, skinless, boneless chicken thighs. And I am using... If you've watched any of my cooking videos, I almost uh, always are using... Uh, one of my legs to say, especially this one, this one is so versatile, and it, I love it, and it is a workhorse. I, I got this used off the of marketplace, so if you want a leg to say, but you're like, that's too expensive, look on marketplace. You will find used uh, leg to say pans and I was specifically looking for this color. This color was brought out in 1972. I was born in 1972. My namesake song was from 1972 through the looking glass and um, I found this from a lady who was selling it in Florida and this pan knew if I bought it now if I could even I didn't think you can find this color because it's I think they retire them after so long. But even if I could find this color, new, this size pan would be probably about $400. And I didn't even pay $200 with shipping. I actually got free shipping. And if you know, these are, these are uh, cast iron. Um, and they have enamel coating over them. And they're heavy duty. So to get free shipping, and I paid under $200 for this, and it... It has the markings. It is from 1972. It's beautiful, and I love it. And I use this thing almost every day. I have more of an oval big Dutch oven I use. That one is more for my uh, soups and stews. And then I have a smaller blue round Dutch oven that I do more for my sourdough breads in the oven. And, um, and those are just things I've gotten through the years for gifts and stuff like that. But if you're wanting to get a piece, but you're like, that's not my budget, you know, then don't poo-poo buying it used. Um, nothing wrong with that. Some of our best stuff has been used. There's things we found at Goodwill. My coffee machine is from Goodwill. <laughs> my husband found. And, um, because I don't really like, I don't like going to Goodwill, but he likes to go, and the boys like to go. That's not necessarily my thing. So, um, so you're going to cook this. It says about five, uh, I guess it depends on the thickness of your thighs, but it says 
You want to cook it until it's not pink any longer, about five minutes per side. So I'm going to finish getting this cooked through, and then um, we'll put the rest of it together because the rice is going, the veggies are in the oven going, and I also need to get the collie rice in the microwave. All right, guys, so it has been long enough. I checked it with my thermometer. Um, if your chicken's over 165, it's done. Usually you'll know because it'll release from the pan. Uh, you never really want to put something um, cold in um, cast iron, even if it's got the enamel. You want to heat these, these uh, pans up. And uh, then you won't get the sticking. And it does not say, so before I put the, the chicken in there, I just did uh, some salt and pepper. I did do a little bit of my Tuscan Italian spice. Um, that was not in the recipe, but that stuff's better with everything. So I put it on there. Then it said to take two tablespoons of um, avocado oil, which I did, I heated it up. I've got the chicken, it's cooked through. So now I'm gonna turn my heat down and I'm supposed to add my tomatoes and my garlic. And that's what the tomatoes look like. And it has a little bit of seeds, but nothing to worry about, not in my opinion. So if you have a lot of cherry tomatoes, maybe you're just doing like a patio garden and you got a cherry tomato plant and you're trying to think of a way besides a salad that you or just eating them fresh, this is what you can do. So you needed two and a half cups of that and a couple cloves of minced garlic. And we're gonna mix this up. And it says you just wanna kinda let it guess get happy together. I think I got a little bit more garlic in there. And, oh, that smells good. And so it didn't say to get rid of the excess, if you had any excess oil or grease, or I guess grease from the, um, from the, doing the chicken. So I'm not gonna worry about it because she didn't say to take it out, and it's a healthy avocado oil. It's a healthy uh, oil. It's good for your brain, good for your heart. Not all, all oil is bad, and not all oil is equal. Um, there's a you really should do some investigating on uh, good oils. Good oils would be your avocado, your olive oil, um, coconut oil, butter. Uh, believe it or not, lard. Um, I actually heard a whole podcast about all this today, uh, talking about inflammation and hormone disruptors. And they say one of the biggest ones are the cooking oil, vegetable oil, soybean oil, peanut oil, um, canola oil, all of those. They are they're not good oils. So um, if you're used to cooking with those, try to slowly... Uh, replace those. You can get a good price on avocado oil and olive oils and all that. Like if you go to an Aldi's, you can get uh, a good price if you know because I know those other ones you can get a lot for the money or whatever. And um, but you can find ways to to get those healthier oils in your diet, and they're heart healthy, brain healthy. And nobody wants those hormone disruptors. They, they are realizing that these oils really play a number on our bodies. And so I, I believe it. I, as somebody who's had issues with all that kind of stuff my whole life. Um, so, all right, so I've got this going. So now, I think it looks pretty good. Let me show you a close up. So this is just with the garlic and the tomatoes and it's kind of at a boil. And so the next part says to um, 
to add the salt and pepper and simmer for five minutes. So I'm going to add, I'm going to add the salt and pepper, and then I'll come back on and show you how to finish it up. All right, it's been five minutes and. It looks really good. It looks like it has thickened up just a little bit, which is what she said you're looking for. So that's good. So your next part that you're gonna add um, is we're gonna add our cream and our basil. So let me show you what it looks like up close. This is after five minutes of simmering. Okay, hold on, let's turn it this way. So now we're gonna add in, I'm gonna go ahead and add in my basil. And I actually have leftover basil, and it's going to be fine because uh, tomorrow is Friday. Yay, thank God it's Friday. Yeah, and so on Friday um, is usually the night that I'll do. Sorry about that. Um, so I've got my basil in here, and I do have extra basil from the garden, and no big deal because, like I said, tomorrow's Friday. And we do sourdough pizza night usually on Friday. So now I'm going to add in my heavy cream. Ooh, that's party. I wish y'all could smell this. This smells so good. Oh my goodness. This looks delicious. It smells delicious. The tomatoes are from my garden. The basil's from my garden. I wish I could say the garlic was from my garden, but my garlic didn't, we just didn't have a good winter. So it didn't get that stratification it needed. And the bulbs just didn't really form. And um, so this was actually a store-bought garlic, but that, that's okay. Nothing wrong with that. Sometimes it's just the way that it goes. So I've got this in here and now, I am supposed to, let me put this up here, so I can get my hands back. All right, so now, all you're gonna do is you're supposed to put your chicken back in there. Remember, it was already fully cooked. And I'm just gonna kinda sop it in this uh, sauce. Oh man, this looks really good. And, wow, you could totally do this if you like, if you're a chicken breast, a skinless, boneless chicken breast kind of person. Um, her recipe called for the thigh, but you could totally do the other if that's your preference. Um, we, we tend to like the, the um, thighs, plus a lot of times you can find them a lot cheaper, if that's such a thing these days. All right, so your last part that you're gonna do is you're gonna take some Parmesan cheese and I'm taking a cheat because I have this. I actually had some I could grate, but I don't wanna grate a third of a cup. I'm just gonna use this and you're supposed to just put it over the top and that's it. That is all there is to it. And so I've got just a couple more minutes on my rice and my um, oven roasted okra that also has the Parmesan. So I'm just gonna turn this off since it's fully cooked. And I'm gonna just set my lid on there. I guess I should let you see it. Let me show you what it looks like. And I think it looks good. So I will show you when everything gets done. I'll put a, I'll plate it up and I'll show you what everything looks like. I wanted to show you really quick while everything's finishing up. It's almost done. Um, I took my tomato seeds and I put them in a mason jar and I put some Berkey water over it. You're going to let it sit for a few days and you're going to let it ferment. Now you may want to put like a cheesecloth or maybe some wax paper and a rubber band, something over it. Um, cause it could attract flies and stuff like that. But your seeds that'll be good for seed saving will stay floating on the bottom. The ones that aren't will float to the top. And that's how you'll know if you have a good seed, uh, to save for next year's garden. So, just put it someplace kind of out of the area. If you do ferments, I have actually heard and read 
not to put your different ferments next to each other. They can kind of, I guess, mess with the other one's mojo or something. I don't know. I'm not a I'm not a chemist, so I couldn't I can't explain that to you. But I have read it in more than one place, and I have also heard that. Um, so I'm gonna set this elsewhere. I don't want to put it next to my sourdough because that's a different fermentation. Um, and I'll have some seeds to save now uh, for my tomato harvest. So again, no ways to be thinking about those kinds of things. Super easy, it's just a, it has an extra step, that's all. And um, wanted to show you that. I will show you the plate up in just a few minutes. Almost done. All right, guys, it is done. It is done. Dinner is done. And this is early for me, seven o'clock. Ah! Probably because all my kids are gone. They're all they're at work. <laughs> But I wanted to show you, take a look how pretty that looks. And that's, I mixed up my, um, it was just a frozen bag from Publix of some collie rice. It did have some, I think it had some peas and carrots in it um, that was in the mix. And so I mixed that in with my brown rice. And, and then I have my oven roasted okra and Man, y'all, with the Parmesan on it and those um, nutritional yeasts, they're so good. Y'all are going to love it. It is so good, especially if you don't like, like, boiled okra where you get that kind of slime. A lot of people don't like that. Sorry, it's rude. I'm talking and I have food in my mouth. You may really like this. It just... I don't know. Even my kid. Now my kids even like it. They like it roasted. They'll eat that in place of like French fries. So, you know, that's a thing. Um, if you're trying to get, you know, maybe cut down on some of that kind of stuff. I gotta get a knife so I can cut my chicken so we can do the big taste test. I'm so excited. Ah! And this one's pretty nice. Now, I did turn my oven on because I did the roasting of the, um, of the okra. And I'm just going to get a bite of the chicken. And um, I took a little of my leftover basil and just did a, a nice garnish on top. But I got a little bit of that, that collie and brown rice mixture with the chicken. And it's got the sauce hot. I need a moment. <laughs> no, I really, I just need another bite. Oh my gosh, that's good. That's really, that's really good. And that's so cool because I grew so many of the ingredients, and you can too. You really can. Um, don't be afraid, you know. Every, I have limitations, and everybody has some limitations. My mother-in-law has limitations, but she's growing in green stalks on her back patio, and she started from seeds this year. I was really proud of her. and. Uh, she has some beautiful squash, and, and she grew potatoes and, and grow bags, and I think she has like 30 pounds of potatoes she grew. So, get out there and try it. It's so good for you. It's good for your, it's just good for your everything, your soul, everything. It just makes you feel better. And um, anyway, I hope you'll give this dish a try. If you do, tell me about it. Tell me what you thought, if you think it's good. Uh, if you know a different variation that I might want to try, uh, or if you have a different recipe, because I got a lot of basil like we saw, I would love to hear about it. We appreciate it if you would like, subscribe, and share our channel. And um, i got to go finish eating, so I'll see you in the next one. Bye!